Hi, friends. It seems like we've come to the end of this uh, war or operation between Israel and Gaza. And I thought, just want to give you a little summary of it and end up in prayer. And I want to ask you a question. Did your prayers influence this war? Did your prayers have an effect upon this war? We'll answer that question in just a second. But uh, first of all, I just want to look at some of the statistics. Uh, the Israeli army said that there was 1,234, 1,234 rockets shot from Gaza toward Israel during this six-day operation or war. Think of that, 1,234. Some estimates I even heard were more than that. That's a huge amount of, of rockets coming over. Now, what happened was that were aimed this way. Now, a large percentage of those actually didn't even cross the border into Israel, but fell into inside Gaza and hurt people and hurt property inside, inside Gaza. Of those that actually crossed over into Israel, about two-thirds of those were just missed shots and fell into, uh, into fields and so on. About that, of those thirds that came over, 94% uh, of them were shot down by the Iron Dome and even a new uh, uh, technological uh, weapon that they have to, a uh, defense weapon. Uh, that, so it was an incredibly uh, successful uh, operation from Israel's point of view uh, defensively. Israel on the other side went out and had many, many uh, uh, helicopters and jets going in and firing uh, in, into Gaza very pinpointed. They did pinpoint uh, executions of the six top military leaders of the Islamic Jihad, and they destroyed some, uh, there were some 371 military targets that they hit, and they did everything they could not hit any civilian uh, t uh, targets. Very few people, uh, innocent bystanders, were, were, were injured during this time. Uh, an amazing set of statistics, really, uh, of, of Israelis that were hurt. There was only one woman, really, uh, an 80-year-old woman that couldn't get to the, uh, to the safe place, and she was killed. Another one that was fatally injured, it looks like probably that person will, will also die. So that's two injured from uh, uh, 1,200 rockets being shot in. Tragically, ironically, crazy enough, two other people were killed by the rockets coming over from Gaza. One of them was a Gazan worker, somebody that came over from Gaza and was working in an agricultural field, getting paid to, to come and work here. And he was hit by a fallout of one of these rockets and he was killed. The other one was a, a Bedouin Arab who was also working in an agricultural field near that and he was killed. So what a, what a strange set uh, of occurrences. The, uh, all all this, uh, this war was uh, uh, very weird and very uh, hard to deal with. There's a couple of strategic, I mean, tactical, military, or strategic uh, political questions that had to be asked. One is, in the last video, I described the difference between Hamas and, and uh, Jihad. It was interesting that Hamas made a huge amount of effort not to get involved in this war, which was unusual. What made that happen? How were they separated from there? How was all of the top-ranking people in the Islamic Jihad, how was that destroyed? How were 371 of their military, basically their whole operational and military base was destroyed by going into this war? And although life was disturbed in Israel, it wasn't really any um, objective, that much objective damage into the country. How was it that, that, the, uh, that Hamas was totally separated from this? And then what happened was that Egypt entered in the picture and they demanded a ceasefire. And the ceasefires happened. There's really no sort of agreement. Behind the scenes, they agreed to stop shooting. But everybody's, their way of having a ceasefire is just saying, we'll shoot back if they shoot at us. And that's the, that's it, their way of saying, both on Israel's side and on the, the Gazan side, of, we're agreeing to a ceasefire. Which means we're not agreeing, but we are agreeing. But how did that happen? There was a lot of things that happened in Israel to political fallout from this situation. Israel, we were almost on the verge of a civil war going on. And this, when this operation broke out, everybody became united about being in defense against the attacks from, from Gaza. So the political situation came to rest for a time period. It looks like 
it'll probably come back into some, something at this point, but in some ways it's kind of saved Netanyahu's government. And it pushed some of the other reform, uh, judicial reform issues back. And now the talk is they're dealing about treasury issues, about issues that the government should be dealing with. There was unity during the time of the, uh, of the attacks. And it, it, it changed things within the political environment in Israel. Now, all that happened within six days. That's, that's a lot of things to be happening in this country. And if you look at the Bible, you'll see the Bible describes when there's war, military war on the ground, that there are actually good angels and bad angels fighting in the, in the heavenlies above this, right above them going on with that. And the third thing is that the prayers of the believers affect the angels, which is affecting the military. So there were so many uh, unusual events that happened during this, during this operation, this six-day operation. It's, it, it doesn't seem natural. It seems like there was a lot of supernatural intervention uh, by angel, good angels and bad angels. And I say, and I have to believe that that was being affected uh, by all the prayers. There's millions of people fasting and praying right during this time. That in itself is what caused this to happen all, all of a sudden. The war, the, the rockets, what happened, the uh, political influence, all this going on. I think that your prayers had a lot to do with it. Many people have been praying around the world for the peace of Jerusalem, praying for, praying for peace and security for this country. Well, think about this. This country went through a major attack of, of uh, over 1,200 missiles being shot in with minimal damage and the entire military infrastructure of Islamic Jihad was taken out, and there wasn't any, any intervention by all the larger Islamic radical groups in the area, and it brought peace and unity, at least temporarily, in the Israeli government? That's very unusual. So to answer your question, yes, I think your prayers did have effect and influence on the war. and I want to ask you, keep praying. We're asking for prayer for peace and security, first of all, and then for justice and righteousness, and then praying for the remnant of Israel, particularly praying for, as we've said, unity between Christian Arabs and Messianic Jews to keep loving ourselves, one another, during the midst of these difficult political and military situations. And out of all this, this wave of prayer is moving towards God's redemption and salvation and revival in this nation. Whew, it's very exciting. So thank you, thank you. Keep praying. Amen.